And today uh, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, information and content to get through. We're starting early. It's just uh, clicked over nine o'clock here in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And this morning we're going to go through uh, the ladies. Uh, seeds, the top 32 seeds. Yesterday, late yesterday, we went through the the uh, the, uh, the bottom 32 of the uh, the seeded players, and this morning we're going to quickly run through the um, uh, the top 16 seeds at Wimbledon 2023 in the ladies draw, and uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, don't go away. Uh, we'll be right back. And welcome back to This Australian Open Life. Uh, coming to you from uh, the production studios of Wise Words Media. And it is a balmy 10 degrees outside here in Melbourne uh, on a cold, bitterly cold winter's morning. And uh, whereas down in, um, uh, down in, uh, uh, at the All England Tennis Club, uh, they've got some fairly pleasant uh, weather. Uh, down there, uh, let me just bring it up to see uh, to see what they're uh, what they're enjoying at the moment. The Poms uh, struggling in the uh, the Ashes Test and struggling to cope with the weather, so they got it coming from all angles. And as midnight ticks over at the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club, it's uh, 17 degrees and the humidity has halved since yesterday, 58%. They'll be sleeping well tonight, the Poms uh, and. Uh, on uh, their Sunday, they're going to have 22 degrees. So um, uh, we're going through yesterday. Uh, yesterday we uh, went through. Late yesterday we went through um, the um, the bottom half of the ladies' draw. Um, and uh, let's change around the uh, the background there for you uh, to make it interesting. Um, that uh, we went through the bottom half of the draw for the ladies' seeds. Uh, today we're going to go through the top uh, 16 seeds um, from uh, the 16th seed to the ladies' number one seed at Wimbledon 2023. So uh, we'll, we'll start that right now. And uh, please like, uh, and if you can uh, subscribe as well, that... Uh, helps us get this content out to a bigger audience and it doesn't matter if you can't stick around for the whole of this uh, particular episode while uh, while we uh, go live no problem you can come back anytime you want from anywhere in the world uh, that you'll be listening and uh, this Australian Open Life we focus on the Australian Grand Slam obviously being in Melbourne but uh, we're opening up our coverage of all Grand Slams uh, and beyond our niche content, which is wild cards and uh, focusing on lesser known players uh, as a bit of a point of difference. And um, uh, we've got a big announcement uh, later today um, regarding uh, player interviews. And um, we want to uh, bring more content because we know it's hitting the spot. we just got to grow, grow our audience slowly but surely. And it'd be great if you could spread the word and all you have to do, uh, you, <laughs> you don't have to do anything except hit the like button, subscribe, a comment helps as well. Negative, positive, we don't mind, uh, so long as there's a reaction. And uh, whether you agree or disagree, uh, it's all about the tennis fan experience. So, the ladies singles, top half of the draw, seated at number 16 from the Czech Republic, is Karolina Muchova. 
Uh, I don't uh, don't know this uh, this player. Haven't seen that name before. Um, but today we're not going into uh, any any uh, player background or stats. Uh, we're just running through the top 16 players seated at Wimbledon. Uh, the 15th seed is a Russian, Ludmila Samsonova. And the Russians and the Belarusians, uh, Wimbledon has uh, uh, dropped the, uh, the, uh, uh, the banning of uh, Russian players and Belarusian players last year. We all know why. There's no need to go into that. But this year, they're also not only allowed to play, they're actually allowed to play under the flag of their country. Let us know what you think. Is uh, My understanding is most tennis fans couldn't care less about what's going on in Europe outside the tennis courts, each to their own. Uh, the 14th seed, a very familiar name to tennis fans. Um, she's been around for a while from Switzerland, Belinda Bencic. And immediately above her is, uh, is, <laughs> is a South American. And it's great to see a couple of America, uh, South Americans in the men's and the women's draws starting to get it back up the rankings because they bring so much excitement. And uh, although they, uh, they play a grinding sort of game on clay, which is their natural service, at the 13th seed, Beatriz Haddad Maia, uh, the Brazilian. Uh, we're looking forward to a bit of uh, a Brazilian flair and magic um, because that's what gets the crowds off their seats. Um, another, well, two more Russians. Um, and there's a fair few Russians in uh, the bottom half of the seeds, we found out yesterday. So uh, the 12th seed being Veronica Kurdometova, uh, the Russian also, I'm not familiar with this name, or the next one, Daria Katsakina. So if there's any dedicated tennis fans who can fill us in on the prospects of these two players, the 11th seed, Daria, and the 12th seed, Veronica, both Russians, um, they'll be looking to, uh, well, they'll be hungrier, won't they? Because uh, they weren't allowed to play last year. Um, and also Wimbledon was uh, stripped of rankings points. Now, um, I'm just starting to have a bit of doubt whether the Russians were or were not last year. And apologies uh, for not um, doing my research there properly, actually. But um, now we're into the top 10. And two players from the Czech Republic um, uh, uh, at um, number 10 and number 9 seeds. Um, Barbara uh, Krejcikova and a very familiar name, Petra Kvitova, um, an Aussie favourite as well. Um, uh, she had some great games against Ash Barty. And another familiar name from Greece, the Greek number one, Maria Sakari, uh, the eighth seed, who's been battling, uh, who's been battling a few issues off the court uh, surrounding um, uh, surrounding uh, drug tests. I think from memory, um, she's uh, uh, or was that? No, I've got her mixed up with um, I've got her mixed up with the Romanian uh, player. I beg your pardon. Sorry about that. Um, and immediately uh, the, uh, above uh, Maria is Coco Goff, uh, the seventh seeded American, who is uh, uh, doing a great job of uh, staying in the elite level around the top ten in the world. Um, she's uh, still young. Um, she's maturing, and uh, and she's got a bit of momentum. And uh, she just needs to take a game uh, to a slightly new level um, to get into uh, you know, Grand Slam semi-finals and, uh, and, and, and Grand Slam finals. But uh, she looks the goods, doesn't she? That, uh, that she's got the, um, not just the engine to get around and the skills and the skill set and the shots, but also the mentality, which is just so important. The finalist, the losing finalist from uh, last year's tournament, the Tunisian Ons Jabur, seeded six, who uh, I've got to say she uh, set the uh, the Arab world on on fire uh, last year um, as uh, being the first Tunisian to play a uh, a ladies singles final um, at Wimbledon and I think the first of any Grand Slam finals and uh, she spoke so well and uh, let's let's face it she looks like a, a Chevy uh, getting around the court and that's uh, in no way meant to be. Um, any any put down or anything, but I tell you what, for for the build of her body, uh, and uh, she's not built like an elite level player is all I'm trying to say, and it's a credit to her uh, her skill set and her mentality, and especially coming from what is ostensibly a third world country, um, she is a player uh, who's going to take uh, the game in Africa and the Middle East. 
uh, into into places it's never been before. So uh, couldn't have been more pleased to see her in the final last year. But um, yep, uh, it's a shame that she lost. But on the other hand, uh, she hasn't gone backwards. She's in the top ten there, the sixth seed. Um, the French player Caroline Garcia, very familiar name, and a bit of a surprise at number four, the fourth seed Jessica Pagula from America. Now, um, this is what I like to see. Uh, each year, year to year, as you just see these new names uh, heading up the uh, the elite levels into uh, top seedings, into the top 10 and the top 5. And Jessica Pagula, um, I'm going to have to make a mental note to do a bit of research on her and, and see exactly uh, where has she come from in terms of uh, what's her tennis journey been over the last 12 months. Because I can tell you, uh, I didn't see that name popping up at Roland Garris this year and she definitely wasn't up the top of the pecking order at uh, the Australian Open. So she must have had some great results um, since the Australian Opa Open. Um, now, uh, from Kazakhstan, Ele uh, Elena Rabinka, the third seed. I'm pretty sure she was the winner last year. And apologies if I uh, sound like I <laughs> haven't done my research, because uh, actually I'll admit that I haven't. But uh, I'm pretty sure she was the, um, uh, the winner last year. And if I've got my uh, very vague facts right, uh, she's also actually a Russian who moved to Kazakhstan um, uh, well before what's going on in Europe currently and uh, decided to make her base there and she's uh, now a naturalised uh, uh, citizen. And wouldn't you know it, immediately uh, next in line as second seed is Arena Sabalenka, uh, the Belarusian. And, uh, and she's um, uh, had to fight uh, a, a huge mental game uh, to maintain her rankings, uh, battling uh, some uh, not not very nice reception from crowds here and there, some um, uh, very uh, uh, intrusive and, uh, let's be honest, uh, fair-minded questions um, uh, that, that have got to do with matters outside the tennis court, outside of her professional uh, work as a tennis player. But um, that's just the world we live in at the moment. And all these players, the top 15 seeds we've just mentioned by name and country, they'll all be aiming for the top, the top ranked player from Poland, Iga Swiatek, who has uh, taken on that uh, number one spot from Ash Barty when she retired, and uh, she's won a couple of Grand Slams uh, over the journey in recent years, especially I think she got uh, one Grand Slam since Ash has retired, and uh, Iga is. Um, uh, the, uh, that uh, that role as number one player in the in the ladies draw and uh, worldwide in the WTA rankings, uh, it fits her like a glove, and um, she's uh, great to watch. Easy on the eye, her uh, stroke making and uh, her shot selection, and uh, and uh, and and she uh, has a, a great way of going about uh, her game management and uh, her mentality as well. And a very easy to listen to uh, uh, interview subject as well. So uh, Iga Swiatek is the top ranked player from Poland uh, for this year's Wimbledon uh, Wimbledon tournament for the ladies. So um, it uh, it's for uh, our listeners to agree or disagree with those rankings. Um, we're going to uh, finish off here. Keep it short and sweet. And uh, let us know what you think. Again, please like this uh, content. Please uh, subscribe. Um, build, help us build up our audience because um, it all goes towards improving the content. Um, and uh, this uh, particular uh, efforts at live uh, stream uh, coverage throughout Wimbledon, uh, we, uh, we had it in mind for, for the French Open. Uh, we just weren't quite ready for it. But uh, we hope to improve improve the uh, the presentation. It's a radio style audio commentary and audio comment, um, coverage um, in the in the sense of trying to uh, bring the listener experience um, uh, the the best possible information um, about what's going on in uh, Grand Slam tennis. So. Uh, Enjoy uh, the rest of your morning. We'll be back around about 10 o'clock to cover off um, the top half of the men's uh, seeds. Uh, we did those uh, late yesterday as well. And uh, for the time being, um, it's uh, this Australian Open Life produced by Wise Words Media. You've been listening to me, the bloke who walks, and we really appreciate your patronage and also your feedback. And... Uh, 
uh, don't go away. We'll be right back uh, throughout today uh, and we'll chat to you soon.